I've been preaching a message since the beginning of this year on the same subject everywhere I go. But y'all don't see me. Y'all think I'm home asleep, but I'm preaching somewhere else. And I've been doing what I call observational preaching. When you think in terms, I've been preaching a lot of years. When you think in terms of 55 years of pastoring, 70 or 75 years of being in the ministry. You know, I have preached from California to Maine and many of the foreign countries around the world. And I came, as I watched the congregation every place I went, and I noticed something that was similar in every congregation I ministered to, that people were leaving the church services the same way in which they came. If they came hurting, they, they left hurting. If they came sick, they left sick. If they came discouraged, they left discouraged. If they came confused, they left confused. If they came disappointed, they left disappointed. If they came puzzled, they left puzzled. If they came angry, they left angry. If they came needing, they left needing. If they came sad, they, they, they left sad. If they came hopeless, they left hopeless. If they came defeated, they left defeated. If they came beat down, they left beat down. Yet, the Word of God that we're all familiar with, and we know what is true, says the church is the house of God. The church is the house of bread for the hungry. The church is the open door for those who have been locked out. The church is the saving ark for those who are lost. The church is a healing bomb, the bomb of Gillian for the sick. The church is the lighthouse for those living in the darkness. The church is the city of refuge, safety for those who are fearful in, in trouble. The church is the stabilizer for those who are falling apart. The church is the place of encouragement for those who have been told they can never make it. The church is the place where the impossible becomes possible. You hear saints in the past because they found the secret. This is the saints in the past talked. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The saints of the past said, Lord, I love the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor draw. The saints of old said, a day in the court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Others put it this way to make it just a little more plainer. They narrowed it down to make it just a little more clear. One thing have I desired the Lord, and that's what I seek after, what you want, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold the beauty of the Lord, and then inquire in his temple. Another put it this way, talking about the church value by sharing their 
personal experience. The Psalms of the 73 pens these words. My feet almost was gone. My steps had well nigh slip. For I was envious of the fools as I saw in the prosperity of the wicked. Those worldly folks, no refrain on them. Prideful folks, they violent folks, those evil speaking folks, those boastful folks, those coffers, they ungodly folks. And when I thought on these things, it was too painful for me. In other words, I was about to throw in the towel until I went to church in the sanctuary of God. And then I understood their end. God, you have stepped them in slippy places and casted them down to destruction. Their end is foolishness. The church is when I found out living for God was right, obeying God was correct, living holy pays off, and no matter how other people seem to be prospering, the end of their life is destruction. <laughs> David, in the 23rd number of Psalms, took the church understanding to its ridiculousness. After talking about the shepherdness of God, he talked about the spiritual rest, the spiritual food. He made me to lie down in green pastures beside the still waters. He talked about restoration. He restored my soul. He talked about divine leadership. He leaded me in the path of righteousness. He talked about protection. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. He talked about divine contentment that prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. I know my head with all my cup running over. He ends his song with these powerful words. Surely goodness and mercy so follow me all the days of my life. And listen, listen to this statement. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long, David? Forever and forever and forever. The church is a blessed place. Are oh, you hearing me, people? Do you understand the value and appreciation of God's house, the church? This is not just any old building. This is God's house. This is God's dwelling place. If God's going to meet you anywhere, he's going to surely meet you in the church. <laughs> this is the place where miracles take place, and signs and wonders are performed. Please, my friend, don't have that blind Isaiah experience who couldn't see. But he said, when I went into the house of the Lord, I, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Open up your eyes. You've been so familiar with coming to this place, and sometimes you think that all you do is come and just hear somebody sing, hear somebody preach, but you need to open up your eyes when you walk in those front doors. <laughs> Isaiah said, yes, yes. His train filled the temple. Six wings, seven fins is flying around this building, whether you know it or not. And two cover their face and two cover their feet and two cover their wings. Don't you hear, my friend, not just my voice, don't you hear the sounds of the angels in this place saying, holy, holy, holy God almighty full of grace and mercy. If, if you watch, my friend, the doorposts begin to move, this place could be filled with smoke. This is God's house. It's the church. <laughs> it's the church. Many of us live a lifetime losing out on trying to please God in our own understanding. Much time is spent 
majoring in the monitors, not knowing what moves God, not knowing what will get God's attention, not knowing what will stop God in his track, not knowing what makes God say yes, even when everything around you is saying no, not knowing what caused him to move in your behalf, not knowing what caused him to bend his ear and come down and listen to your cry? What caused him to change even natural laws in your behalf? People don't understand it. He'll call the sun to stand still to help his saints. He'll call waters to come walls so people can come on dry ground. He, of course, the fire not to burn you, although it was heated five times, seven times seven. He, of course, the sun to stand still just in your behalf. But don't you know, my friend, uh, if God's going to work, he's surely is going to work in the church. <laughs> Check the Bible and see. It points to one thing that so many saints do not see, and this is why in my 55 years and 75 years in the ministries that I've seen people come and go the same way in they came because they missed out on one thing. Look, if you will, when you go home at Matthew's 8, it talks about a dying leper hiding in the bushes because he knew he could not dare get near clean folks because the Lord said you can stone dying leopards because they're contagious. And so he could not show himself. Yes, he sat there and listened to Jesus as he taught the Sermon on the Mount. The dying every day, the dying leopard, skin turning white, sores all over his body, pain just to move from place to place, got sicker every day, knew that this was his last chance of life. And so he put his life at stake and stepped out from the bushes right in front of Jesus and said as loud as he could, Lord, if you will, thou can make me clean. Now, don't get hooked up on what he said because it's not what he said that is key, my friend, is what he did. When you go home, look at verse 22. I said he stepped out from the bushes, but he bowed down and worshiped Jesus. Bingo. He did, my friend, what was necessary. And when Jesus saw him worshiping him, Jesus put forth his hand and touched this diseased man, did what nobody else ever would do, not even his family members, touched this diseased dying man, said, I will be thou clean. And the killing disease stopped and wellness came. And listen to what the Bible said. And immediately, not next week, not after a series of prescriptions, not at some time of rest and recreation, but the scripture said, immediately, the lepers was cleansed. Because things happen in the church. We come in here looking for help. But friend, when help was right sitting next to you, help is in this building. And got it because he did one necessary thing. He worshiped God. Well, I can see right now some of you didn't get me, so let me try it again. 
<laughs> Look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, as you will. Jesus is in a far area, not Jerusalem area, outside of Jerusalem. And a mother, a Syrophoenician woman by nation, a non-Jew by nationality, a black woman by color, had a young daughter who had an unclean spirit, demon-possessed, as one writer puts it in the Bible. What does this mean? Unclean spirit? What is the Bible saying? Demon-possessed? What does that mean? Is the Bible saying this daughter won't obey the mother? Is it saying that she got a daughter that runs the streets? Is this saying, this unclean spirit is saying it stays out at night and sometime all night long? Is this unclean spirit demon possessed means that her room is a hall pen she never will clean? Is this saying that, that she has the desire, this respectful spirit? Is this mean that she's hooked on alcohol or she's hooked on weed or hooked on drugs? Do this mean that she sasses and talks back to her mother? Do this mean this unclean spirit, this demon possessed? What does it mean? It just makes it, it never spells out. But one thing I know it does not mean, because I don't know what it does mean, but one thing I know it does not mean is that she fights and hit her mother. Because I said that this was a Syrophoenician mother, a non-Jew, black in color. Because if she lived in my mother's house, the, the, the cry would not have been, Lord, come and help me. I, I got a daughter who needs healing. The cry would have came from this black mother's head. Lord, come and help me to bury my daughter. I just killed her. You, you got to understand the story. See, this, this, this might be all right for Caucasian, but this ain't right for us. If, if you lived in my house, now, now you, you might not clean your room, you, you might not do the dishes, uh, uh, you, you, you might do things that I don't like. I, I tell you to be home at 12 and you come home at 5, you, you can do it. But if you hit mom, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can hear my mom said, I brought you in. I'm getting ready to take you out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the Spirit says unclean, 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 demon possessed. This was the cry of the mother. Notice, read the story because one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. Notice Jesus paid this mother no mind. He just kept on walking. The disciples cried to Jesus. They said, no way. She's crying after us. <laughs> Jesus even said it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. But read verse 25 when you go home. Because verse 25 says, and then she came with all of this negatives against it. Then she came and worshipped Jesus. Then she came. I don't care about the bread. I, ain't, I don't care about what your disciples said. I don't care that you did seem to acknowledge me, but she worshiped Jesus. Bingo! Because when she worshiped Jesus, listen to the text. This is my, my words. Listen to the text. The text said the daughter was made whole. When? Next week. The daughter was made whole that very hour. Not made well, but made whole. Well and whole are two different things. See, you, I might have a sickness and you can make me well, but, but my spirit might be all messed up. But when she worshiped Jesus, Jesus touched her physical difficulty and then touched her spiritual difficulty. 
because when you deal with Jesus and if you worship him the way you need to worship him, he will make you whole. Am I getting to anybody here? Now, now, you, you, you keep on living. You get 98 one time. Okay, okay. 89. You, yeah, look. Do you see it? The worship, this is the miracle thing. This, the worship brings results. The worship opens closed doors. Worship makes ways out of no ways. Worship heals sicknesses. Worship calms troubled minds and spirits. Worship brings peace out of confusion. Worship stops the devil in his tracks. Worship causes God to react. There's something about worship. My brothers and sisters, don't you understand what service you in, what place you in? This is not a Sunday school gathering where we teaching you the Bible stories. This is not Wednesday night pastoral teaching. This is Sunday morning. Hallelujah. This is high service time. This is miracle forming time. This is worship God's time. This is my friend, but anything and everything can happen time. Don't you understand? You got to, when you come here on Sunday morning, you got to do more than clap for the deacons. You got to do more than say wonderful choir. You got to do more and appreciate the dancers. But when you come on Sunday morning, you got to come with a worship in mind. Hallelujah. You got to worship. Don't you understand? Everything you need is, is worship. I don't know who's here this morning. I don't know what your problem is. I know how you're sick in your body. I don't know what your home is in trouble. I don't know whether or not you need a job. I don't know what the doctor said. Oh, I know, my friend, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. And if you, ah, you worship, ah, you worship, ah, you worship. Worship, 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 ah, you worship, say yes, worship, worship, worship. <laughs> what is wrong here? Man, we're, we're, we're not here just to be here. We're here to give God glory this morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Worship. 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 Somebody being healed right now. Somebody getting the answer to their problem. Somebody, God is touching right now. God is opening the door for somebody right now. God is making a way for somebody right now. God is turning the situation around now. Just worship, just worship, just worship, just worship. Come on, stand on your feet. Get out of the, just worship, just worship, just worship, just worship, just worship. Ah! Worship! Oh, 
Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Everything we need is in your hands. We thank you. We're going to be able to leave here different because of who you are and the place of your board. In Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together one more time. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now here's the secret. You did what needed to be done. And God did what needed to be done for you. Now you go tell the devil he's a liar. What I asked and needed has already been supplied. And on the basis of the word of God, I got it. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some glory in this day one more time. This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.